You see, but Jesus made a way for us to twist this New Year's resolution around in a beautiful new light. And not just do a New Year's resolution, do a daily resolution. There you go, Abe. And in, Ma in, in Luke 9.23 is where Jesus lays it out for us. He says that we need to take up our cross daily and follow him. And see, that is how we fall in line with God's will for our life. And that we grow in him is through daily going to him and growing in him. Making that resolution every morning when you wake up, not at the strike of New Year's, but at the strike of of dawn, saying, God, this is your day, and I'm going to live it for you. Tackling a day at a time, not a year at a time. So let me ask you, are you going to live God's will for your life in 2015? Are you praying for his plan in your life, that it'd be a smooth path, that you wouldn't deviate from the course very much? You wouldn't take too many detours along the way. Well, if you are, let me tell you, it starts with you doing one thing that's very important, and that's stopping. A few days ago, for those of you that could stay awake, we counted down the new year. We saw 2014 go away, and we started 2015. Let me ask you, is this the year that you get in line with God? It all depends on what you are chasing after. Open your Bibles, if you will, to Psalm 46.10. Psalm 46.10. It tells us, cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in all the earth. Cease striving. The word here in the Hebrew for cease striving is the word rafa. And it means relax. So we see God telling David in times of battle, in times of work, in times of stress, in relationships, in peace and in war. Relax. Relax to know that I am God. Then he goes on. I am to be actively exalted among all the nations. The word that's used here is the verb to literally actively get going in our exaltation of God. I will be actively exalted among the nations. I am to be actively exalted in the earth. We are to be in the state of actively going after God in our relationship with Him and actively stopping what we're doing. Turn, if you will, to Psalm chapter 5. In Psalm chapter 5, verse 1 through 3, it says, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groanings. Heed the sound of my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. And this is the best part of this, I think. In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you. And eagerly watch. What this verse is, means is when I rise, I'm going to be talking to you. When I wake up, a prayer will be on my lips. A conversation will be on my lips towards you. I'm going to cry. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to spend time with you. Talking to you throughout the day. My day is a conversation with you, God. And then... I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch your provisions throughout the day. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch your comfort. I will read your word. I'm going to see your beauty in all creation. A lot of times we just walk so busily through life, we don't see God's fingerprints in everything that's around us. 
And you see, that's what God is telling us to do, is to cease striving, cease obtaining, cease going after things, and take time to notice Him. Take time, actively pursue Him. Proverbs 16, 9, it's one of my favorite verses. It says, the mind of a man plans his ways. How many of you are planners here? You guys have a checklist for almost every single thing, right? I'm not like that, okay? I'm not like that. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. I got to make a checklist to remind myself to start making checklists. Now, and there's people that do that. In the morning, what do I have to do? I got to make a checklist check. All right, I got that down. So those planners, for you that are a planner, you can't do anything just shooting off the hip. Listen to what this verse says. The mind of a man plans his ways, but get this. The Lord directs his steps. Ooh, all those planners are getting their checklists out and just ripping them to shreds right now. You see, the Lord's plan always takes place. The end result will happen, whether you want it to or not. You see, He knows our failures and successes. There's no surprises in Him. You might be surprised at your, your own failures. You might be surprised at how you may have fallen to temptation. But the Lord already knows and He has planned, not for that to take place, but around that. So the end result is always to His glory and always for your benefit. You see, that's exactly what our Lord God has done for us. Is He has shown us the path of righteousness. He's shown us the way that we should live. And if we would just follow in His footprints left in the sand. So let me ask you. Are you prepared to live His will and see His plan to the end for 2015? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. and We'd like to ask for your hand of guidance to be with us. Lord, speak through me as I open this word and share it, Lord. Lord, I pray that it be convicting in my own life and the lives of everyone else. Lord, I pray that today you would prepare our hearts and our minds for action. Let us be doers of your word and not merely hearers. We pray this in Jesus' precious, most holy name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. You see, the truth is, many of us don't want God's will in our life. Many of us don't want God's will to be in our life. And if you did, you'd be acting it out. You would be actively seeking it and trying to live it out in your life. Instead, people want their own will. People want to enforce their own will in things. And the Bible tells us we should be praying for God's will in our life. Because it's not an automatic thing. It's not something we wake up and say, Lord, I'm going to live your will today. And it's going to be simple. No, that's why Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 6, when he's teaching us how to pray he gives us this beautiful thought and a thought that is so hard for us to grasp, so hard for us to do and live by. When he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The phrase your kingdom come is something we say, but we don't really dwell on it that often, the meaning of it. And you see, the reason why I tell you this, brothers and sisters, is because this is the mentality we need to have spiritually. We need to have this mentality spiritually. As long as I'm waiting, I'm going to be doing some cleaning. 
as long as I'm in this body, in this earthly suit, I'm going to be doing some spiritual cleaning here on earth and in my own body. As long as Christ has me waiting for His return, I'll do some cleaning in my own life. I'm going to remove the things that are not right. The skeletons in my closet are going to come out. The dirt of lust and covetousness will be swept not under the rug, but they'll be taken out with the trash. The dust of guilt and anger and bitterness, they're going to be wiped away and not allowed to settle in my life. Because while I'm waiting here on earth, I'm doing some cleaning. Philippians 12, 1, 21 and 22 it says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I am to live on in this earth of flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which to choose. Paul was saying, if I'm going to live here, I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to work for the Lord. I'm going to do his will in my life. While I'm waiting, I'm doing some cleaning. But if I die, oh man, that's so much greater because I'm going to be in His glory and in His presence. Living means fruitful labor, cleaning house. We need to do and live as Paul in fruitful labor. Meaning in every circumstance, trying to see how it can impact the kingdom of God and how we can impact others for the kingdom of God. So in essence, what we're saying in Matthew 6.10 is, God, what you want done, let it happen on earth starting in my life. What you wish to see, let it happen in my life, which means you have control over letting that take place. Which means you have to push your will aside, the things that you desire and wish for, and put God's desires first. Let me ask you, what about you? Are you trying to please God and do His will? No matter what the struggles, what the challenges are, are you trying to get done what God wants to see in your life? Are you praying the prayer of our Father with any truth in those words? Any effort in those words? Your will be done? What is God's will for your lives? What is the print that he left in the sand? What is the print that he left on the path for us to follow? To make our life easier to walk in? Let's look at a few. Starting in Romans 12 too, The will of God, and I'm paraphrasing these, so just stay with me here. I want you to write them down and check them later. Romans 12 too, The will of God is that you'd be transformed by his word, and not be conformed to this world. 2 Corinthians 7.10, God's will wills the believers to feel guilt. God wants you to feel guilty about things. So you ask for forgiveness and reject the wrong that you've been doing. Ephesians 6, 5 and 6, He wants workers to do their best, even if their boss is there or not. He wants you to always be working for the best. Working for the Lord and rather than for men. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 God wants us to stay sexually pure. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 God wants us to always be thankful no matter what is taking place. Find a way to be glad. So that goes for all you Eeyores out there. 1 Peter 2.15, God's will, God wills that instead of retaliating, instead of retaliating, that we would do what pleases Him instead. We would choose the right path. In 2 Peter 3.9, God does not want anyone to go to hell, but for everyone to believe in Jesus and have salvation.
Mark 3, 3, 35 says, For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and my sister and my mother. That's very convicting, isn't it? The first part of his will is to be his child by putting your trust in Jesus Christ. Believing that Jesus died for every bad thing you've ever done and ever will do, and that he rose again three days later. And when we allow Jesus to start working in us, when we pray every morning, God, you're hearing my voice and I want to live your will. When we let the love and grace of Jesus shine through us, we're living his will. When our salvation takes over and makes it infectious within us, it just spreads into all areas of our life, we're living his will. Doing God's will is not earning salvation. It's allowing God to work through you so his kingdom can be seen on earth in you. Philippians 2.13 tells us, For it is God who is at work in you. Don't look on the person and say, Look at how great that person is. No, because they're the vessel allowing God to work. It is God that works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Living God's will is never going to be easy. But as an ambassador to his kingdom, for one trying to show the joy of living for him, it's worth it. Let me ask you, are you seeking him? Are you seeking his will for your life in this battle? Or are you struggling against it? You're trying to fight it tooth and nail. Luke 9.11 tells us, So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. I tell you, you, you must seek God's will. Are you tired of fighting and going your own way? Knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find. James 4.8 says, Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You can't live by your own will and God's will. It's a battle. It's a struggle. And you're going to lose. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, pray it with meaning in your life. Pray it realizing that you have the duty, or the choice, I should say, to live God's will out in your life as He directs your steps. Live His will and see the beauty of the pattern He has on the other side. Let's pray together, shall we, brothers and sisters? Dear precious and heavenly Father, I thank you for being such a wonderful and awesome and mighty God. Lord, we come to you right now and most often times we say these words, your will be done. Lord, on earth as it is in heaven, we completely lose the meaning of them. Lord, your will is that we would look more and more like your son each day. Your will is that we would reach people for the cross of Christ. Your will is that we would fall deeper and deeper in love with you each day. But Lord, as we say these words, we're not even getting into the word. So how can we live your will? How can we be asking for it if we're doing these things? Lord, help us to be in your word daily. Help us to be guided by, by you, Lord. Help us to hand over our will and make it yours. Lord, I pray for each individual here that would be strengthened and that we'd live by you and for you. 